alleged for 123 billion naira flow. The testers storm casino government are banned and refined is arrest. I am this is not politics. Associated with Kaduna Citizens Watch for Good Governance, KCWGG, have called on the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to investigate and arrest former Governor Nassau L. Rufai over allegations of financial mismanagement. The aggrieved protesters gathered at the Kaduna State Government House on Thursday, urging current Governor Ubasani to direct the EFCC and other agencies to prosecute Herufai. They cited a reported indictment of his administration's finances totaling 423 billion naira. Watch. Our state has endured financial mismanagement, abuse of power, and a growing debt burden for the past eight years. The most troubling finding was the diversion of 10.5 billion naira, meant for pastoral nomadism, and the construction of the milk industry at Damo Kubo local government area for the construction of Galazim Mall, and additionally, the report uncovered overpayment to contractors, payment to unregistered companies, and funds disbursed for work not completed, which amounted to over 36.3 billion naira. Furthermore, an expenditure of over 11 billion on a non-existent MRC transportation scheme was documented with no evidence to support it. We call on Governor Obasani to officially forward the findings of the committee to relevant anti-corruption agencies to enable them to swing into action and recover our resources at their disposal. We assure you of our maximum support as we are aware that those who ought to be behind bars for looting our state now have the end country to dish out threats to people. We call on security agencies to immediately arrest and prosecute former Governor Malam Nasir Ahmed Erufai and those he has incited to bring down the government of Senator Uba Sani. Call on Governor. Joining us to look at this is the team lead, Kaduna Local Government Accountability Mechanism, called LGAM, Yusuf Ishaku Goje. Also joining us is the President Kaduna 23 local government movement known as K23 movement, Comrade Bashir Belo and Comrade Jabir Aminu, my Aturare coordinator, Kaduna Accountability Network. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Nice having us. Thank you for having us. Good evening. Fantastic. How would you want to start, comrade? What is your opening? What is your opening sound? We're going to sound like. I well, read um, the intro. You listen to the intro. I need to know your uh, starting perspective. All right. Um, thank you very much for having me, and good evening um, to you and to our viewers. Um, well, um, the revelation that came out of the report um, of the Kaduna State House of Assembly is one 
that should give every resident of Kaduna State sleepless night. Um, because um, 423 billion Naira um, said to be siphoned, according to the report, is monies that should have gone into healthcare, into education, into providing the needed infrastructure that would serve as the foundation for the economic prosperity of the state. But um, for this sum of amounts to be said to be siphoned is really disturbing and should really get everybody on its toes in terms of ensuring that every Kobo is accounted for. And that is um, the general perspective that I have. The one thing we must put into perspective is that the findings and recommendations of the Kaduna State House of Assembly is not a judgment of any competent court. So the people that have been accused, as well as the administration as a whole, is still, uh, is still innocent until proven otherwise in the court of law. So we must distinguish that and refrain from um, comments that make it seem as if the proof report is if it has really uh, passed the judgment or given a verdict on the last administration. But we must understand where all of this is coming from, um, because there is an argument for governance perspective and also from the political perspective that we need to look at. Um, from the governance perspective, the question we must ask ourselves is that where was the National Assembly? Where is the Office of the Auditor General? Where, where, was, the, all where, of was, the state, where was the State House of Assembly? Oh, never mind. Yes. I'll, come, I'll come back to you. Don't worry. Uh, yes. uh, do we have Bashar there or Jabel? Bashar, how would you want to yes. start? First of all, I would like to thank you for hosting me for this very important, very important discourse. Thank you. I agree with my brother, comrade, that Erufai's administration is, uh, is, is, is pathetic. In fact, he's been economical with the tool, but for long, you already know the, the direction of the administration right from the beginning. And the amount that people are even speculating has been that the amount that the, uh, the, the that has about assembly published with respect to the charges level, I guess, in is just they are even being economical. That is just talking of the debt his government collected to carry out various projects and programs which they diverted for other private purposes. There are more to this than what has been revealed to us. Mal Nasser Erupai has left Kaduna virtually bankrupt. That is the fact, that is the truth. And we should not be economical, and we should not be diplomatic in our approach to the issue of corruption. We are talking of 14 million Kaduna state indigents that have been robbed by an administration that, held, that only helps way for just eight months. Will you believe that from 2015, so 2023, when its administration ex exited power, the volume of both domestic and foreign debt has not only quadrupled. In fact, he 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 assumed power on a clean slate, and I don't think the last the administration the, that came before him left any left any debt behind apart from the little domestic debt that we have, well, apart from the foreign debt it inherited right from 1960. No debt has been incurred by the succeeding administration right from 1999 up to 2015 that she took power. But could you believe that between 2015 to 2019, the foreign debt has amounted to over 720 something million US dollars, while domestic debt is close to 10 billion Naira. That is the debt for our contractors, those are our petty contractors who have families who at least if they are paid will 
will boost the economic economic activities in Canada. That is why Canada okay. has now. I'll come back to you, Bashar. Let me let yes. me go to Yusuf now. Thank you very much. Are you still? Are you still there? Yes, I'm with you. Uh, you you stated that you wondered what the Kaduna State House of Assembly was doing for the level of a uh, level of abuses that have now been been that are now being alleged to have taken place. You also wondered what the Office of the Accountant General was doing. But uh, within, within the peculiar nature of our political system, we know that most states' House of Assembly, uh, most states' houses of assembly are beholden to their governors. Uh, we know that the Accountant General in the states are practically beholden to the governors. And so I'm sitting here now and I'm thinking, what was somebody like you? What was the organization that you represent? Civil society. What were you all doing when this travesty, this alleged travesty, financial travesty, were being committed against the people of Cardinal State? What did you do? All right, thank you very much for this um, wonderful question. And I will take you um, on a short journey. Um, since from forward. 2015, can you hear me? We can hear you well enough. Yes, um, since from 2015, we have engaged the administration of Malam Nasru Erufai from down to when he signed into the Open Government Partnership. We have been part of the uh, technical working group on open budget. And that has provided us access to some level of information that we have consistently used to call out some of these issues. Because there is practically nothing new that the group of the State Assembly has brought out that we have not talked about. And there is evidence. Go and search my name either on Google or on Facebook. Look at Kaduna Depth. You will see the amount of write-ups and issues that I have raised personally, and as a civil society platform, you would see that during budget town hall meetings, during public uh, hearing in the Kaduna State, uh, annual appropriation public hearing in the Kaduna State House of Assembly, our presentation has consistently raised the issue of debt, raised the issue of uh, breach of procurement processes, and all of these issues that is now um, breaking news for a lot of citizens. But the issue then was that because many people were afraid to come out and really follow up the issues, or people just feel uh, want issues that are sensationalized for them to just jump on it and shout. But evidence are there that we have engaged. We have written several documents uh, in that direction. We have directly engaged the Office of the Auditor General on the uh, debt issue. And I would it shock you. During the election campaigns, with the support of some development partners, we held a dialogue for governorship candidates. This incumbent governor was in attendance during that dialogue. And we raised the issue of debt. We raised the issue of revenue. And he categorically told us that why are we teaching on the issue of debt? That no country that does not survive without debt. He gave instances of Dubai and all of that. He practically defended the depth that today we are talking about. So, and these things I'm telling you, it is evident. You, could, you can go online and check them. If you want clips of this engagement, all of them are there because Kaduna is the first uh, subnational to turn into the government partnership. And we have done a lot in that direction. I'll come back to you. So let me go to Bashir now. But sure, the same question, uh, naturally, I would uh, is begging for an answer from you. Uh, it's convenient now. It's convenient now for somebody like you
to be castigating what you believe to be the lack of respect for judicial and for financial transparency and good, you know, good governance under the last administration. But when that administration was in office, what specifically did you do to at least bring them to account and protect well, the people of Cardinal State? As a, as a, well, as an individual, we appointed to the people right from the first, second year of the administration that this man meant no food for Cardinal State. He was running the state as if it is his personal fear. Yes. Uh, he, he carried on recklessly, reckless abuse of power. And what I may, I may like to call all term uh, fi fi financial mismanagement. While a Nazi Rai, unfortunately, we have been criticizing, we have been calling people's attention. It will go like my colleague said, it will go through the social media because that is where our power lies. If you go through the social media, you will find my postings right from the first year of the administration up to the date you step from power. For drawing the attention of the people on the implications of all these, these, these uh, pro, uh, fictitious programs and fraudulent projects White elephant project, deceiving people, diverting funds for other private uses. At the end of the day, immediately after his administration, we were, we were approved were right by the ninth assembly of the just a few months after his exit. So we have done our, our, our own, we okay. have made our own effort. Let me, let me individuals. Quickly. Let me quickly pop over to Yusuf now, and I'll come back to you with the same question. Yusuf, notwithstanding yes. the fact that you uh, seem to convincingly, at least you and your colleague, you seem to convincingly uh, have indicated that you went out there, you were shouting, why you believed that the administration was was uh, running roughshod uh, over the financial uh, situation of Kaduna State? And one would have thought, I'm just thinking aloud, one would have thought that apart from social media, you had the machinery of the courts too. Uh, you could have picked on a well investigated issue and you could have. Uh, not only uh, send official letters of complaints to uh, relevant agencies like EFCC, ICPC, and even if you were not satisfied, uh, your civil society organization could have articulated uh, the, the right to litigate at least to use litigation to bring the administration to accountability on the specific issues that you must have investigated well enough uh, with this kind of with this level of disturbances that you you claim you are claiming that you had under uh, under that administration. How would you respond to that? Well, um, thank you again for that um, question. So for every civil society, they have their own area of strength. And litigation from our own end is not our area of strength. And that is why we leverage uh, for permanent dialogue platforms like the Open Government Partnership, where we sit face to face with government officials and raise these critical issues, as well as sit with the state member House of Assembly. And I remember vividly. Uh, annually under the last administration were holding public hearings and these issues kept on coming up because we do budget analysis and what have you. So um, going forward, that is what we need to take as our lessons, how we can partner with civil societies that work around the litigation component. Because litigation, litigation is very expensive and you have civil society, for example, like Serap, 
that get a lot of funding to go into litigations and all of that. And mostly because the will of our justice system grinds home, there is no guarantee that if we um, court, it will be the judgment will be given within a reasonable time that will be able to still hold the government accountable. But I think it is a general system issue where citizens only pick up issues when it is sensationalized. But when the real engagements are happening and you bring out the facts, because these facts were the four members of the House of Assembly, they defended it. The previous Auditor General, we engaged him that your report has not been capturing the component of loans collected. You've not been doing value for money uh, audit, which should bring out which projects have been abandoned and all of that. So this is the situation we find ourselves. But we commend the Kaduna State House of Assembly, the 10th uh, Assembly, that has taken the bold step, even though there are still insinuations that there are political back tones that are really pushing this. Because what we have seen with this report has never happened in the governance history, the governance history of the state. This is the first time that we see the state assembly come up and bring out a report as it is, even though a lot of people that have read it like us still have one or two areas of clarity. And we're engaging the assembly to clear that. But they have done their part. And I know that a colleague of mine uh, in Campaign for Democracy uh, also working around taking this issue also to court. But let's remember, like I said, why I am careful in making blanket statements is that the report of the House of Assembly is still remains accusations, regardless of the high sentiments and people already passing judgment. Until a competent court of jurisdiction passes a judgment, we can't say they are guilty as charged. But in terms of evidence of utilization of money, we have not seen that this money has been utilized to the level or to the value. Uh, in terms of how much has been collected, in terms of loan and all of that. And per capita, our current loan is about 450 uh, billion uh, naira. So if you look at that, considering um, that we have a 10.4 million naira population officially now, based on the 3.18% uh, annual growth, that means that about uh, approximately each resident of Kaduna State owes about 40 thousand never about. But when Malam Erufai came, he complained. Then I remember it on the media that he met a situation where our debt uh, per capita was 15,000 uh, nera when he complained against the last administration that he took over from. But now he has doubled that amount and is also going to triple the, almost tripling it. So these are issues that I think that NGOs and civil societies okay. that are strong. Okay. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the good thing, Yusuf, is that uh, you know that until the matter is adjudicated upon by a court of competent jurisdiction, uh, uh, all of these will remain allegations. And allegations are not convictions. Uh, let me quickly go to Bashar. I'll come back to you. Right. Bashar, yes. you, as uh, some people are uh, saying out there, and I, I don't like being rude to my to my guest, but I just have to put it in a very kind and polite way to somebody like you who is as vociferous as they are about what we about what you reasonably believe to be the abuse that the Kaduna State Treasury uh, was subjected to under Malam Nasser Air uh, But some are saying they had always known that. And you know what? When he was there, uh, when he anointed the incumbent, then as an aspirant, when he machinated the emergence of the incumbent, then as a candidate, when he orchestrated his victory, then as a candidate, uh, nobody bothered. Indeed, like the two of you have, you know, rightly stated, even the contemporary history of the Cardinal Status of Assembly, uh, the ninth 
session of the Cardinal State of Assembly was at best docile, if not totally subservient. Uh, but the people are now saying people like you are literally or practically being used as tools in the in the partisan, in the rabbit partisan uh, political situation within the ruling party or uh, in Cardinal State. How would you respond to that? Well, first of all, I would like to draw our attention to the fact that conscience is an open wound. Only truth can heal it. The current governor of Cardinal State. On the audio. Yeah, yes, I'm concerned. Thank you very much. For not. The current governor of Cardinal State used to obey his conscience. Likewise, the Ninth Assembly, which people are beginning to believe that it was being delegated by the governor. You know, it, it is the revelation was mind boggling. Nobody in his right sense, nobody in his sane mind will see the monumental corruption that was perpetrated by the administration that will not shrink. So it is not, it, the matter is not just about corruption. If there's anything that is Uglier, worse than corruption has been perpetrated by them. It it, you see, what we are okay. calling for oh, okay. is not uh, that we are. Sure. We, sure. we, yes. Bashir, I'll come back to you, but I want to implore you to let us stay within the context of corruption because I know that you see, Imalam Nasser Rufai uh, has a peculiar personality. That those who like him, they like him to the point of identity, and those who those who love him, they love him too. So <laughs> let's stay within the context okay, of let's, 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 uh, okay. Having said that, having said that, I'll come back to you without Jabel. Uh, Jabel, I welcome. How would you want to? What would be your opinion of the take mm -hmm. of this development in Cardinal regarding the allegations against? Uh, uh, Nasser administration. Good evening, uh, viewers and listeners. Good evening. Can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly. We can hear you clearly. All right. Uh, in regard to the uh, uh, issue in Kaduna State for the misappropriation of uh, over 423 billion naira. By the former administration of Malan as well, Malia. The alleged misappropriation. Yeah, the alleged misappropriation. So uh, mm. it is something, it is obvious to everybody because this is something that uh, the Kaduna State House of Assembly has already done their own investigation and they invited those concerned with Malan Nasura Amadeir uh, work with throughout these uh, two tenures, which is the eight years we spent in Kaduna State as executive governor. And likewise, they have been interrogated and they have come out with their own uh, findings and they have called it to the executive governor of Kaduna State, Malan uh, Ubasani, for his own uh, assent to, the, uh, investig to their own investigation. And likewise, I want to draw the attention of the general public in this, in this case. If, uh, let's take the case of uh, Koji State. The Koji State, the former governor of Koji State, Yaya Bello, has never been uh, uh, proven by any authority in the state or anywhere. But the AFCC are going after him, trying to arrest him without even in, uh, uh, in some cases, in some uh, information that they haven't even sent him an invitation uh, for him to come and uh, 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 answer some question by the AFCC. But in this case of Malena Suramadeh, by investigation has already been done by an authority, with the authority he worked with, most of them, when he was the governor of Look at the report. There are some certain instances, there are some certain uh, monies that uh, even the speaker was not even aware. He didn't even sign to even approve the loan. But Mr. Nasser Ahmad Erba has gone a long way to make sure that he takes that loan and even use it. So in this case, I don't think there is anything one can do or one can say about this kind of issue. It is better for the ESCC if truly 
they are fighting corruption uh, with, with the fear of God in their hearts. So let them just go ahead and arrest Mother Ignatius by all otherwise, let them in, uh, invite him for questioning and answers towards this uh, alleged misappropriation of funds. Chabal, are you perchance insinuating that the EFCC may be deliberately taking its uh, eye off the board on this allegation by the Cardinal Status of Assembly against the administration of Nasir uh, Arufai? Are you insinuating deliberate effort to sweep it under the carpet by EFCC or what? Yeah, I think uh, I can't say it's a deliberate, deliberately effort, but I think I think are they afraid of him or what? Because, because uh, I don't see no reason that somebody would just go around uh, roaming about with this kind of allegation on him. I think they should just go ahead, invite him for questioning and answers. Because already we know when the good people of Kaduna State know, are, aware, are aware of it. I'm a citizen of Kaduna State. I was born and brought up in Kaduna. So at least I know a lot of things in Kaduna. So at least there are a lot of misappropriation of funds, which we know that though you can only be proven guilty only when you've been presented uh, by, by the court of law. But yet he cannot be, uh, we cannot say yes, he has already uh, stole that money or misappropriated that money. But at least. And it must also factor in the fact that uh, the State House of Assembly's committee that investigated the allegations and came out with the report. The committee did not at any time invite necessary Rufai. They did not at any time interview or interrogate him. And one would think that uh, in accordance with the principle of the law of natural justice, it would have been fairer and better, and indeed far more convincing if he had had the opportunity to defend some of these allegations that are now being thrown around against his name and his administration. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. They haven't invited him for any questioning by uh, the Kaduna State House of Assembly. They haven't invited him. But at least they have invited all the people concerned, which most of them are the ones that uh, maybe use the money or they, have, they are the ones that uh, awarded the contract, though he has to give approval for that. Because uh, from what we had and from uh, our own findings as a Kaduna Accountability Network, that most of the people that were invited by the Kaduna House of Assembly, when they were asked, they were they are saying that they are, they are working based on instructions. So yes, I agree with you that they have to invite the Kaduna State, uh, the former Kaduna State Governor Madanasu Erupai. But despite the fact that they haven't invited him, since they have already get their own report, or maybe they have invited him, maybe he didn't even follow their own invitation. Does it not seem somewhat? Consistent with natural justice to you that if those who were invited and were interrogated stated they were working to instructions, uh, the committee ought to have at least tried to identify who the instruction giver was, and the committee ought to have also. Uh, invited the instruction giver to come and speak to all those allegations against him or her. Am I making any sense to you, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, let me go to Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf. Yes, I'm with you. We are, we are where we are now. On a show like this, I seldom get, uh, I seldom get my guests to uniformly I support a position. And so as a fellow Nigerian, you know, as a fellow Nigerian, I can sympathize with you people because I know uh, some of the efforts that you may have made during that administration and now some of you may have been tapped as enemies of the of the state or as a as some, as some former handlers of a president uh, used to call people like you as well as 
as the destructive elements. But we are here now. If after the report of the House of Assembly, it does not seem to you that the incumbent governor and the present administration is doing well enough to make sure that the relevant statutory agencies like EFCC, ICPC, can do their work. What are you people, and this is for Yusuf, and I will go through uh, each one of you, Yusuf, what specifically are you as civil society organization doing to make sure that EFCC, ICPC, uh, the, the fraud unit of the Nigerian police, please, and um, any other relevant agencies uh, can look into it and take this to his, uh, on his natural course to a court of competent jurisdiction. So, um, thank you very much um, once again. Um, so, like I said, we have been engaging from our own end. We have not jumped into conclusion. Though the reports uh, brought out findings that are very troubling and disturbing, but um, we believe that let the full course of the proof and the litigation also uh, take a cycle before we, we can really um, say that this is this person, whether he has stolen or not. Um, the one thing is that the House have already put forward their report. It's in circulation. And the former commissioner under the last administration uh, also put out a preliminary response saying that they would uh, discrediting the report, the probe report, and saying that they would answer uh, uh, the probe report, the issues raised one by one and make it public. So while we are waiting for that, like I said, I know um, a colleague, the national president of Campaign for Democracy, who are here today in the meeting, because today we had a meeting with the House Committee Chair on information, NGOs, and development partner on this same um, conversation, and we are continuing that conversation this evening. So, and he made a commitment that they are ready to take this issue forward. And the House Committee Chair said, yes, we have done our part. It is now left for civil society to take it forward. So, on the issue of whether EFCC would act or not, EFCC would have to wait for an official petition to be put before it or any other uh, agency. If not, it is all social media uh, trial that is happening. So until that petition is written, the EFCC cannot probably uh, on its own begin to act. So we wait to see um, civil societies that will submit their petition based on these allegations. And from there, that is when the real investigation can take place. And that is when we can say the EFCC can prosecute in court. Thank you very much. So for us, for Mr. us, we will continue Mr. to advocate and push. Mr. Don't worry. Yes. Uh, you, you've made that point well enough. Let me go to Bashir now. Uh, Bashir, uh, uh, does it not seem somewhat, um, uh, uh, let me put it mildly, does it not seem somewhat incongruous that is only people like you in the civil society um, stratosphere of uh, Cardinal State that are particularly disturbed enough to be leading protestations, to be coming to TV stations to speak to this alleged alleged uh, abuse of your state's treasury, when ordinarily there is a principal officer of the law in the Cardinal State government, in the incumbent Cardinal State government. And that principle of the law is called the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice. And even if the governor does not seem to want to do anything about it, maybe because he's beholding, he's beholding to necessary Rufai for having done him the favor of being his successor, what are you people doing to let the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice of Cardinal State know that he is now betraying the confidence of the people of Kaduna in that lofty office? This is for Bashar. Is Bashar there? 
Okay, if the shah is no longer there, is Jabal there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, is, is that Bashar? Yes, I'm the one. I'm the one. Okay, fantastic. How would you respond to uh, the, the point I just made now? Yes. That is why we are pressure group. We are putting pressure on all those that are concerned. The Attorney General and even the EFCC, ICPC, and even the public. We are mounting pressure on the general public to ensure that this, this, this report is not swept off the carpet. Even the government said, because all the protests we have been carrying out around and the press conferences and press releases we have been issuing and all the write-ups we are given is to attract public attention to the monumental fraud that, are, that, that are, was alleged to have been perpetrated by the actual administration. So I think, can you hear me? I said can allegedly. Allegedly, I yes, I said know. it. Yes, I said allegedly, yes. It was, of course, it was alleged, yes. Thank you, thank Although, you. Yes, thank you. Although it is obvious, but alleged. So secondly, the, like I said, the EFCC, the ICPC, other security agencies will not act until they are prompted, or unless they are prompted to act. So, in a situation whereby we, the civil society organizations may not likely write to the EFCC or ICPC, then the onus definitely, in fact, the onus is on the government to write to the EFCC to call for the crop of Malan Nasra Rupai over the allegations leveled against him by the House of Assembly. So, we, our own angle, the angle we are taking, which we, and which we believe, Harris more weight is to put pressure on the state government to do its duty to ensure that that particular report that indicted Malan Asher by uh, is not straight of the carpet. That is our angle now. That is why we are all we have been agitating doing what, what is necessary. To ensure justice for the people of Kodnos. Okay, okay, Bashar. Let me let me put uh, the question to Jabbar with a, a little uh, bit of modification. Uh, Jabbar, uh, people like you, people in the civil society uh, uh, ecosystem of Kaduna, like yourself, are calling that the relevant statutory agencies uh, look, into, in, look into this allegation, especially when the allegation, as we speak, came from a credible body, that is the Cardinal Status of Assembly. However, Jabbar, I am reiterating that there is another mechanism that is, if you people are as confident as you are, that these allegations can be easily substan substantiated. There is the mechanism of the court of law that the attorney general of Cardinal State, or indeed a, a collection of civil society organizations in Cardinal State, working with, say, an organization like Serap, you can also do a civil litigation because all you need is that you want a court of competent jurisdiction to have the benefit of listening to the allegations and see the evidences and make a pronouncement of it uh, on, 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 on those uh, allegations and evidences. Japan, what are you people doing if EMCC is not moving and the Cardinal mm -hmm. State Government? does not seem to be moving to. This cannot just be uh, permanently in a state of incoherent. Uh, how would you respond to that? Yeah. All right. Uh, in regard to that, at least that is why we uh, need a press conference calling on the attention of the relevant authorities to do the needful. Uh, likewise, if they didn't do that, uh, that uh, as you said, that is the attorney general and, uh, of the of Kaduna State, which is the Commissioner of Justice. We are going to write to him that let him just swift into action. 
I didn't let him just take charge of his own responsibility to uh, protect the interests of the good people of Kaduna State. Because now we are not talking about Mara National by uh, Senator Mala Obasanya executive governor. We are talking about the uh, millions of Kaduna State people. A lot of people are in, in, uh, in abject poverty, which we everybody is aware of it. So we cannot withstand and see this kind of thing is going. If they cannot sweep into action, we are going to take charge and maybe take some lawyers to take them to court, let them investigate it, unless they have something, uh, maybe they have hand in this misappropriation, alleged misappropriation of funds by the former administration. Because uh, we cannot see this kind of things working. At least the attorney general, I think we don't have to even say he should just Jabba, go and do it. Jabba, let me quickly you know, just uh, ask him. Um, uh, let me quickly just uh, add this, and I want you to respond to it, and I'll go when I'm doing my closing round. I will also go to your colleagues on it. Uh, Jabba, would you know that there was a time when then Governor Nasser al was boasting that the person who was going to succeed him, the person who is now the incumbent governor, that he was giving him the privilege of sitting in council during the state and regular council meetings every week, that the man would drive all the way from Abuja to Kaduna, mm -hmm. and he was allowing him so that there would be, you know, he said he was doing it for the succession machinery to turn well enough. Forget about the seeming, the seeming, this location that is between the two of them now, I'm thinking maybe, just maybe the reason why the state government is not very, is not seemingly enthusiastic to go the whole hall is that uh, some not properly buried cadavers may be showing their hands and their eggs when this is further investigated by an independent body or litigated in a court of competent jurisdiction. What's your take? Yeah, uh, yeah, like maybe as you said, but I don't think there is any other thing. I can remember yes when he was uh, making that uh, statement in uh, different occasions. But at least what we are talking about now, the past has already uh, passed. We are talking about the present, and uh, we are heading to the future. So if we are heading to the future, a progressive future. I think let's just take charge and do the, the needful. Let's forget about what happened. At least it's not that we should forget about everything. Make findings as the way the Kaduna State House of Assembly has already made their own findings. So let's just do, let's let's just face the justice because this is not uh, a four hundred million naira or four hundred thousand naira. I'll come back. I'll come back to you for your closing remark. Let me start with uh, Yusuf or his closing remark. Yusuf, how would you want to wrap this up? Well, um, first of all, let me commend the Kaduna State. House of Assembly for carrying out this probe. Um, it has brought up a lot of issues. For belatedly, for belatedly finding the Dutch courage to question the unquestionable uh, little god of Kaduna, is it? Yes. Better, it, better, late, better late than never, are you saying? Yes, um, I think it is better late than ever. And I think um, the, the state assembly should be commended. Then even the governor also at the point, despite his relationship with the former governor, uh, called the town hall meeting to raise some of these issues. I think that was what um, uh, motivated the assembly to take up the probe process. But be that as it may, the critical question we must ask ourselves is that those loopholes in terms of breach of law, breach of processes, and uh, all of that, have they stopped? Currently, because if you look at the 2024 budget, I'm not saying it is still happening. The same, this current administration wants to borrow about the 150 billion naira, which is huge in itself. This administration is currently giving out contracts. So some of the issues that were raised in the report, because they were beyond individuals, these are issues of laws and processes. Have they been covered? So these are questions that I want to use to conclude my statement. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Yusuf. Uh, if you ask me, there's that popular song that says, Who I go ask? Uh, Bashar, mm -hmm. uh, I, I need to also give you the opportunity of uh, 
of uh, making your your epilogue. How would you want to wrap it up? Well, first of all, I would like to call on the, pop, the people of Kaduna State. Like my colleague said, we would like to appreciate the effort of the Kaduna State. In my, in my own opinion, I would like to call on the people of Kaduna State to come out en masse and demand for justice. Demand for justice. En masse? Elmas, are you calling for a Kenya type this thing? You must remember we that have to come, we will continue to protest and protest until the executive or what, whoever is concerned with the need for that is what we plan to do. Okay, thank you. No going uh, back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jabba, how do you want to close this? Okay, uh, as the way, uh, Mr. Yusuf has already said, uh, also, I will also recommend the Community House of Assembly for doing uh, this finding. And likewise, I will commend the executive governor of the state because nobody would think that he can come boldly speak about this uh, issue in that whole, uh, town hall meeting because of his relationship with the former governor. But at least because he has the heart of the uh, gold and the heart of the good people of the state, that is why he is better for him to come out and, say, and speak the truth so that they should know where he is coming from and where he is heading to. And uh, I commend him for that uh, sweet action. And uh, as well, I will also charge him to take the responsibility, forget about anything, let him think about himself and his family, because the reputation and posterity is there to God. If he do something because of relationship, posterity is there. Malena said, I will not be there. Everybody has his own grace. And at least you are the one that will be questioned after you quite this So let him just con uh, concentrate on the way he started it. We appreciate him and we continue to pray for him for longevity and to do the needful for the good people of Kaduna that have started, even despite the fact with this uh, huge death in Kaduna State, but he's doing very wonderfully well. And I will, I will also conclude by saying okay, we will not hesitate to continue protesting until justice is being done in Kaduna State. Let the good people of Kaduna State get oh, them their own okay, let, me, let, me, let me use this opportunity to commend the three of you for, uh, for being the voices of the silent majority, the millions of people of Kaduna, we need civil society, especially in a liberal democracy, and we really appreciate what the likes of you are doing, because without voices like you, we know that politics is a game of party party, and sometimes these things are swept, swept under the carpet. Keep, keep shouting. We will always give you the platform to speak to a larger audience. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you very much for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we wrap it up for Thank this you for having us. I am still baller about plus politics. Have a good evening. <laughs>